standing in the Mid-Atlantic Rift. And if you remember how we studied geology and the theory of tectonic plates, giant plates are floating on top of liquid hot magma. Right here, however, we have two plates that are starting to pull apart. On my right hand side, we have the North American plate. On my left hand side, we have the European plate. And they are slowly tearing apart, and that is what creates such dramatic volcanoes and hot springs and geysers and hot pots here in Iceland. It is a very geologically unstable place. All of this geothermal instability creates large and impressive hot springs all over Iceland. Here we are enjoying one of the most famous, the Blue Lagoon. <coughs> in Reykjavik, the capital. We're at what's called the Blue Lagoon, and it's famous for being these amazing hot springs where people are allowed to swim in, but that's not the main purpose. It's actually the hot water is a byproduct from a power plant you see behind me. And the unique thing is, the scientists have figured out by studying geology that there are pockets of hot water trapped below the earth. They're being heated by liquid hot magma, and what they've done, the engineers have figured out how to bring that water up to the surface in order to make electricity. 
So 99% of Iceland's electricity comes from these geothermal power plants. And um, on top of that, it makes a pretty cool place to come and enjoy the amazing hot healing waters of a hot spring. Hot water up and then be either pumped back into the earth via the injection well in step five or in a cave. So just wanted to show you the force or the power or the energy, the content with the geothermal. We are not that familiar to visualize. And same thing is you with the falls, you know. If you really go to the dams, it's something different. But if you go to the Niagara, where you see the electricity given, that is also different. Like, I mean, unusual natural things, when you happen to see, you can appreciate what is potential. But at least I got connected to this one a more um, that gazes, you know, that slow uh, camera approach, what they did. It's a sudden thing which will uh, erupt up. In, um, uh, we will visit in the, in the history when I'm trying to touch it. So what is this? What is this geothermal energy? Anyway, our common sense tries to tell you that, uh, that geothermal is nothing but something to do with something underground. So geography. So something related to the earth. So we are trying to tap the energy. All that is, yeah, if you go and see that, where does this energy is coming from? We know that the earth is itself crust, the same as your atmosphere. Atmosphere is also divided into several kind of stratosphere, that sphere, this sphere. Several spheres are there before even you can reach that uh, ozone layer. So same thing, the earth is also classified into different kinds of layer. Minimalist, we call it as the inner core, outer core, the yellow area is your outer core. Then coming back, this red kind of suction, we are trying to tell it as a mantle or the, uh, beyond that is the surface of your earth crust. So coming and seeing here, this temperature, what it is here, it is almost equivalent to the surface temperature of the sun. That's what uh, it is claimed for. I am not here to test that, but at least this is what people had predicted it. There to see the temperature, the inner core is so, 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 so powerful. Where did it come? Did it come from the sun? Yeah, and the sun got heated and the heat went and collected? It's not happening that way. When I read that, that what is this happening is they are having that all the soil also contains the isotopic material, right? The f fission process, what is taking place, enough of fission process, the energy released is all connected together and it is stored as your uh, magma, the, all the ma ma metals, because even I, um, soil also contains metallic uh, substances, right? Where do you create this uh, uh, gold or anything, you know, the mining? Soil contains all kinds of materials there. So that is how the magma is close to the that. So the story is, is about the magma. When we see about the story when Japan is getting heating about the volcano or thing, we see like a hill and on the hill things come or the hash come. Ash also sometimes flows out. Not only the liquid magma, but even the ashes. So what is happening is this guy tries to travel in a seep through. So you have the covering this guy when he said that there are plates, right? The plates are trying to cover. These are sometimes, you know, they have the clean edges in between. So when it is high pressure, like water boiling out, the same way this guy, magma also seeps out. So during that time, it erupts up and that volcano took through that hole. It's as tiny as that, according to the uh, Earth's, Earth's crust. It's a tiny hole where it erupts up. So when it is erupted, the other story we guys know. So this is how the volcanoes exist, okay? That is one of the source. And the another thing is we see that springs, hot springs, hot steam. Where is this coming from? Is the steam coming from magma? No, no, no. All that is, if, you, if I have, if I consider this as your rock, that big rock that is existing, the water that get, went beneath it and stored there, it tries to heat the whole rock. The water, the, the, the surface around it, or the water pockets around it, those guys get heated up. That's all. Those guys results in your steam, uh, in hot, hot springs people call. Otherwise, uh, suddenly the glaciers come open up that we call it as a, a steam glaciers uh, of the picture. So at least now we have an idea how this heat is coming, but how much potential these guys can have. Uh, can this beat the sun? 
can can it uh, um, can it be more reliable than your windmills? So this kind of a story. What is its capacity? What has it been doing? We are not very familiar with it because we are not experiencing here. But what is that uh, the capacity of it? That is what we wanted to go and see. But to go back into it, is it something new theory or what is it exhibiting? Same as your solar, this also has its own history. So the history goes back 10,000 years back. We call that as uh, Paleo Indians. Usually we call it as Native Indians in um, U USA. They are all several generations back. Then we call it as Native Indians who initially settled and later all other uh, uh, expatriates go and settle. So we distinctly, like here, we have tribal, so scheduled gas, a separate quota. We have for tribal, uh, Native Indians, uh, a separate quota. We don't call as Native Indians, they call them as Indians alone. So th sometimes there is a confusion. We Indians and that Indians, only we try to tell Native Indians, otherwise the, in the application forms or anything, they have like, it is Indians, okay? Okay, that is just out of the subject. Now going back here to see that, that those guys, who initially settled. I also didn't know what is Palinio. I am trying to tell you whatever I experienced because this is what you guys have to do. If a single word is not understood, take some time to go back and know what it is. Otherwise, don't present it. That's the, that's the style you should have. Because that minimal thing, if you do not understand, then you are not going to be confident of what you are trying to do. So the Palinio is nothing but ancient in the Greek world. In thermodynamics, I have mentioned that already. In thermodynamics, 90% of letters are from Greek language. Okay, so same thing, how we believe our Sanskrit, the most of your thermodynamic terms came from there. Now, those guys 10,000 years back, and then this, even that solar collector using the glass as the thing, it was uh, done in Italy only, they, they started to use it for their bathing purposes. So these guys, Romans were there to have the hot spas, they figured it out, water is come, coming, so they created the hot spas area where they can go and uh, uh, take a, a kind of a relaxed atmosphere. From there, this yellow stone, that's what, I, in 1800s man, we are in 20th century, two centuries ago. Right? So we are trying to tell, uh, uh, see there one is those kind of years itself, Yellowstone Park, why I was connected is I live in North Dakota. I can say this is one of the area people go as a tourism, but I haven't gone and visited. That's a different story. But I hear through people what all is there. I want to go as a family. It never has worked out so far. Now going there, that guy, that Yellowstone Park, it's one of the U.S. Uh, uh, top most uh, national parks in US. So people crisscross the country, try to visit, like going to Niagara Falls, Disney. This is also one of the spot, important spot people visit. There, if you see that, that is the place. 1800s, it's a water springs were there. I mean, hot hot springs were there. These geysers and all people had seen. I have seen the videos when they had shot. But only when I see it together, when the guy threw the ice lamp and was, he was telling, see, you are living on a plate. Just see that, ima imagine that, uh, that, uh, that kind of a picture. You are on a plate. And the plate is North America. Or just you put one foot uh, uh, this way, this plate belongs to Europe. That's why they call it as a Eurasia. No, the Eurasia is for a Kazakhstan, right? That divides that area. But see the di di difference between these two, 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 only one step up and one step down. A line they're trying to divide. That it shows uh, um, how unique situations certain places are for to I call it as a border line or a divider line. So this is, uh, they, do, do, at that place in, in US, they already were selling in the 1800s a wooden tub for one dollar. That's a luxury. To go back and take a bath, they, when people are going to the river and somewhere else taking bath, people having the luxury of laying down. That's why the, I think they had the jacuzzis and everything in their principle itself. We never have the jacuzzi principle here. Every house. We, I also have the jacuzzi in the house. For what? Put my uh, washing clothes inside there. Otherwise, I don't sit inside the tub. But I'm trying to tell something comes as a, a habitual and it creates as a kind of a um, 
what is it, a need or an essential, like what we tell, like a puja is essential for them, it is something like that. Now, going back and seeing that, that later in San Francisco, in California, why I'm more specifically focusing on U.S. is, it's not that I wanted to focus, but that is the top number one in the world producing geothermal energy of electricity. Iceland has a, a, a good potential, but I'm trying to tell who has put in terms of tapping for the... Iceland is a small area, man, so not much, but in the United States, 90% of the geothermal energy comes from California. But having said that, in worlds, the topmost electricity driven through geothermal as a source is uni United States. Now, going back and looking at in San Francisco in 1856 itself, they had opened up uh, uh, to uh, the geysers for that and then later after 100 years they had shown that it's just a resort but uh, the other one after 100 years then you see the development of you can utilize for the electricity again going back to the story then just 100 years back after 1800s so still several hundred years back the things were already existing as the electricity driven uh, geothermal systems were being existing there. Now going into your a simple theory, okay, how this electricity is produced? Very simple, catch the heat, either the steam or get the heat, go send your low boiling for point liquid, get it heated up, send once the steam comes, you heat as a heat exchanger, you can go back and utilize your regular turbine. From the turbine end and all, it's not something new, but I wanted to say that the turbines were existing those many years back. So, seeing that, that's all. Water to steam, steam drives the electrical generator. Uh, so, only thing is geothermal, mo most of the natural resources, we always claim them as the natural resources. As they exist, they are site specific. We can never copy my next neighborhood. If you have the resource, do it. It's not like other person has and we can do it. And with some things are all site specific. You have to transfer through the pipe. It's not like on site you can have things. So these are all little, little things we have to uh, uh, go about in look, looking at it. Before I jump there, now that I know what is the geothermal energy, what is, okay, what are all kind of uh, geothermal energy, how I can tap, I'm just asking that, how do you connect with solar? What is the difference, uniqueness about sun, wind, uh, what else we said, biomass, and now uh, we, are we are doing ge geothermal. What is the uniqueness about this guy? Okay, at least I will take wind and uh, this one. Now tell, I will reduce it, okay. Compared to wind and compared to geothermal, what do, what do you see the uniqueness? This is concentrated and uh, with this distributed Diluted, very good, very good. Next. <sighs> there you go. I don't have to give the introduction. This type of energy is not dependent on the sun. Tidal is not dependent. These are the two renewable energy sources that is not dependent. Smart kids, tomorrow you guys are going to crisscross and grade each other. I believe. You all know all questions, let us see. Yeah. And then, so uh, I haven't had to set my part. Yeah, I have to go and uh, sit to, tonight to grill you. I will sit there and do things. Okay, now coming back, but when you compare with your sun, sun is intermittent, right? You, you supply and demand doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. And then if you take as a wind, you can go back, and apart from that diffused thing, you can also go back and tell like what? This guy is? Steady. Water is better than your air in terms of your specific heat or thing, right? This is stable enough compared to your air, uh, how the flow takes place. It can be so many things because that guy itself depends on the sun and the other thing. This guy is not so dark. Direct heat directly comes. So it is more stable enough for us to see. Okay, now how can I use this hot? Okay, I see some steam. How should I do? Should I go there in a steam bath and enjoy there? Or should I go back and utilize for a useful work for purposes? So that is what is a story. So usually people apply it as your direct, direct uses because how you can utilize it for your direct applications. The other one is about your electrical. The electrical, yes, luxury. We wanted the electric electricity car. That's not a big deal of the difference at all in electricity generation.
But going back into the small scale uh, uses, starting from the heating the homes to your pasteurizing the milk, there are many, there are many different sections because I have again graded them as your uh, temperatures also. Because in solar thermal, we also have that low temperature, medium temperature, high temperature. So here also, depending, because we see one, on one end geysers, on another end magma, on another end just steam coming, right? So you have different grades of the heat coming out. So how am I going to use for what I can use it? So that's why we are going to classify the resources in two different div divisions. One is as a low temperature and the other one is a high temperature. Low temperature, again we need to tell, whenever you tell like low, medium, you need to have a reference point. So try to define in your reference point in your research. This is what I termed it as. No one is going to come and hit you. As long as phase change is coming, you know that until phase change, you have your own way to play. Okay, what is that you want? After phase change, what is the region you are calling as a super? Same thing here. Like we are trying to name that 10 to 95. In fact, it was Fahrenheit and we got converted with a coordinator here where he was helping me in the night. So with his help, I said, hey, what is this temperature? Can you find it? Okay, ta -ta -ta -ta. that's how my computer was working. So. 10 to 95, that's why it is like looking as 95. I could have made it as 100, right? So, 10 to 95. No, there is a reason. There is a reason. Yeah. Once you reach 100, what happens? Oh, okay, okay. I will ask the same question. Is that by 100 you get uh, boiling? Okay, man. Okay, okay. I'll come back to your smart point itself. Depends on the pressure. For perfect. The excellent thermodynamic. Thermodynamic baby. I really gave a good name for you. Two people were there. Perfect name. Okay, now I'm telling. At one atmospheric pressure, 100 degrees, will, will the uh, uh, water boil? That's because the way I ask, no. Then I will ask you why. Too much of uh, technical man. Come back. Go to your TS diagram and see why is geothermal. Geothermal is sitting somewhere else. Okay. You have a PV diagram. Okay. Ah, uh, oh, ah. Okay. That R ah is coming here. This is constant temperature lines. Okay. Now tell me. Does it boil at 100 degrees for one atmosphere? Huh? Wait. This point is called what? What is this called? What is this line called? This is critical point. What is this called? Saturated, water. Saturated liquid line. What? No water line. Who says water line? Because, okay, I'm agree, agreeing with yours because I said water, so you're telling saturated water line. That's fine. So okay, Sa now saturated liquid line. Now thermodynamics, baby. Tell me. Now will it boil at 100 degrees at one atmosphere? This is this is the pressure is one atmosphere. Yeah, that's what I expected. Thing is, at 100, strictly speaking, it will not boil. 100.00001, it will start boiling. So, little tweet, just to, just to test our brain how smart the magma inside the cerebral column is working for us. That's why we go on a little bit tweak there. But these are all not the kind of questions anywhere you will be expecting it. I'm trying to tell how deeply you can go, how sharply you can answer. Okay, now that is that is why that 95 was retained there. Otherwise I would have put it as 100 because that goes into a phase change, phase change area naturally beyond 100 our different pressure conditions that is there naturally with your one atmospheric pressure conditions. Okay, with your low temperature reservoirs, now that it is between 10 to 20, 20 to 20 to 95, right? What did I put before? Whatever it is. Okay, you are better teachers than me because that is what my last minute preparations comes up. Okay, now seeing that the low temperature application can go as simple as from the heat pumps. Heat pump is a technology. See, we saw the plates are there. The plates are trying to transfer the heat and all. They are all several miles down. 
Have you ever walked a few miles? Have you walked few miles? Surface only, not inside the magma. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. On the surface, have you guys walked? Two miles or something? Can you imagine the same horizontal distance vertically? We always see that earth is like a ball. Earth like is a ball. So in a few miles down, only you can see this kind of a magma or this kind of water. This, um, uh, if you want to tap the heat for residential houses and these things and all, people generally go only few feet deep. At least for Fargo conditions, just to six feet deep, we can find. That much amount of heat is enough. Just few degrees. That itself can act as a beautiful uh, heat, a heat pump and effective heat pump system. So most, most commonly is it is a heat pumps and for other applications as it is written there. So that's not my main story to go back and attend to you guys. I want to, and then where is the high temperature? So keep the low temperature applications as you are directly, you are using it for a different purposes, uh, starting from the uh, room heating to the, to the, to the, uh, house heating or space heating to other simple applications like um, milk, 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 any industrial applications like I mean you can think about. Now going back uh, for your high high heat that is the guy which will be used for electricity generation because for power generation we know that we require certain amount of temperature and we know that higher the quality my higher the temperature of the resource my my efficiency of my turbine increases so that I have to keep it as high as possible so high temperature is definitely essential so high temperature applications are generally considered for your uh, electricity generation so given that um, now we are going and touching about the heat pump and there are different three categories we can divide based on the surface with which the temperatures are there and I'm trying to extract so based on the surface like about six feet or eight feet deep it's almost to a surface compared to miles. It, we are talking in terms of the feet, right? So compare the, that one is your ground source heat pump. The next, you, when you are having the hot springs that is coming out, hot springs, that 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 stuff can be used for your district directly. You can use it for your district uh, heating. Like district heating means what? The entire community being heated, not like an individual house. So entire, the big pipelines can be kind of constricted and it can go. So that is one thing. And then the last one is your commercial uh, Commercial electricity generation, if the minimum should be 105 or 100 above the temperature. So, okay, going back and seeing that what are the uh, three basic forms of the ge geothermal usage of the energy is the first one we are trying to go back and utilize it, the surface, the surface is utilized, and then few feet down you go, that will be your heat source and you are trying to utilize as your heat pump. So for your heat pump, the temperature between 15 to 25 degrees is sufficient enough. This is for this place. But for your, uh, 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 for North Dakota like, where outside is minus 35, 6 degrees is more than enough. So if this is roughly a range, 15 to 25, as stated for your heat pump with stuff. So here, um, Again and again, I'm coming to the stage, sorry. Okay, this tries to show you a little bit dramatic one, uh, trying to tell like how my uh, wells are there, and then water uh, tries to pump out the heat, and then tries to get pumped. Okay, goes and then gets pumped inside, heat the uh, heat your water, and then come out. So that is how I don't know why is that the blue goes there, and then where is it coming down? The, the direction of flow, it's a counter flow, I agree. This is a counter flow. But here it is in the opposite way. Instead of he heating your, this is your heating, Allah. This is your heating of the surface. So it's somehow, for me, it is, I didn't see this gym view. On, 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 on working scale, I didn't see. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to. See, but one thing I wanted to say. On one end, for the surface heating, don't think it is only one way process. For during winter time, it is used for heating. During the summer time, heat is using as a sink. This throws. So it can it, it might be worked out, the diagram might be worked out based on that. 
Okay, now go and make what are the main components for that guys. To go back and see that they needed a, a pump naturally. You needed a loop of pipes where the uh, water can be circulated and can be uh, get heated up. It is a heat exchange. Usually when you are going underneath, when you wanted to pick the temperature, say according to me with my, my, with my experience of my, in the research, I can say that selection of working fluid is as essential as you going and finding a new system for yourself. A suitable working fluid is extremely essential because you know the concept here that HFG, you can, sooner when you meet with your face change area, you can communicate a voluminous amount of the heat communicated there. So that, that area is really essential to go back and think. So all that is, you needed a pipeline where my water can be sent inside and you needed a pump for it to work and some control valves. So that is what it is. And in case if you are if, if you are directly driving it or you are using a, a refrigerant for the water to be pumped, my, one of my students use carbon dioxide liquid as your, you liquefy it, use that one as a, as a refrigerant. So in that case, I I wanted to have a heat exchanger for it to communicate that one to your space heating part. So that is the idea with which that those are the three main components for that one. And this is for your uh, underground configuration for a larger scale, how the pipe, we cannot see anything but at least the data tries to tell you that minimum the length of the pipes which has to be embedded. You can either do a vertical one or you can do a, um, a, a horizontal piping. Usually the horizontal piping bed is much easier so they try to have much more. But the vertical one is much difficult, <coughs> draw small small holes. You have to control the soil. Just imagine when you wanted to make a foundation, it will be sliding. Making a bed is much easier. Take a take a level of your area you wanted, make a pit, go and dip it. So there they extract more, but vertical one is much uh, difficult. And second thing is, the, there are other little, little reasons vertical are also better because you are naturally getting your thermal stratification. We don't go on same to that extent, minimal data for your geothermal because it's all steady, no, no air around it, so no losses that is happening. The ground itself acts as your uh, resource, so you will not have much of losses. So we need not go and be too picky about a certain thing. So about the 1000 feet pipe for horizontal is being embedded horizontally where the water is circulated that can be circulated in the house. So this is about the district, district heating. Here hot spring stuff is utilized for doing that particular job. The entire community, the little blocks you see, the entire community can be heated up with that. And then coming into your uh, uh, space heating, uh, over in, in US alone, over 300,000 buildings in the United States, including homes and schools, they wherever that resources is there. Uh, in North Dakota, as a first-hand experience, I can say that geothermal is commercialized, is commercialized. We have technicians to come in, it's like your air conditioner. Something gone wrong, you come and attend it. So it's not like... Uh, uh, it's, a, it's something localized you keep as a unique one and all. So 300,000 of the buildings are utilizing that. And for water heating purposes, you are just need your exchanger and you get your applications for you. And uh, coming back into your, uh, how much is the cost? A rough cost, you know, it always gives you a kind of an idea for any system when you try to talk about it. So in order to create an approximately 2,500 for refrigeration ton capacity. Expensive only. Where we don't convert into dollars, more they will make us to come up. Ours also already from 72, it has come down to 66 man conversion. We will be there. Let's go. Uh, and then going back into your 310 gas, uh, gas fire thing, they have to spend about 4,000 US dollars. For in order to get that refrigeration uh, refrigeration capacity, so this term is not uh, usually refrigeration is measured as a refrigeration term. 
So our turn we call. So the, the positive uh, cash flow investment, of course, in spite of break even point throughout the year when it is applied, we are able to still save the money of 3,500. This alone is not attractive numbers. I will go and show you one number. Uh, in, in, in the last four points, you will see what you guys can do, not here and when you are located in some other place where you have the visas and all, as, as things comes together, how much, for me it was informative. When I said, I have to thank Dr. Sujay that who uh, forced me that I need to do something on the geothermal. So, it was very informative for me. I had to, I will mention that, I will show you guys. 1993, the uh, Environmental Protective Agency, they tried to make a cut. These guys, I wanted to tell a stop little bit here. These EPA are, say for example, someone invents it, uh, uh, PVT, photovoltaic thermal system. This school, that college, that place, this place. Now, these guys take different countries, different spots, test that before it can approve that this is a technology to be believed in, you can go for it. So it is ongoing. I, I, I know about that. That is the reason I'm telling because I was uh, involved in a, a honeycomb structure for a PVT collector. So that is the time I know that this work is going on when I'm referring articles. So they try to test this guy in different countries in different pocket of areas and they said that among all other heating technology this is believable, reliable this source when they try to give an information or the statement about it. This is the most, the heat, through the geothermal heating, this is the most, the, through the heat pump technology, that is the most efficient way of heat pump thing. The minimum you should understand through the heat pump. Okay, let's uh, take a stop. For your thermodynamics again back. You are very smart now. In the turbines, you know that Sumati again and again touches that question only. You are saying that uh, my heat engines can never be 100%, it will be less than. Okay? How about heat pump, my dears? That's why I found my question to go for this. I'm very happy. But what is the difference of uh, air conditioner COP, refrigeration COP, is also COP. And you have had. No, that's what is that it is telling you all. Yeah, I agree. You are fingertips. But I'm so happy. I, if I have this kind of uh, information or uh, participation coming, I would love to teach you all whatever the little I know I can I can add on uh, to you guys and learn myself as well. Okay, going back to the story here, why is that air conditioner we are trying that minimum as a heat pump, why that guy is a means, the heat pump, minimum it will work as a resistor. I can heat my room, minimum. But that extra 6 degrees which I absorbed from a geothermal, that extra that 6 units get added. Minimum it will pray as a resistor. So that confidence you guys can have through your heat pump, always efficiency will be very, very high. So another thing people wanted to tell about the reliability. Last 30 years or more or even 50 years, it, the lifetime is very, very high. And in fact, it was approved. I will show you some examples of that also. And then now going back, uh, will geothermal uh, heat pumps, do they work? Do they really work? Yes, the reliability has already been proved in 1993 EPA. See, see, okay. Then, what do, uh, do these uh, homeowners say? After using this, what is that? Are they having the positive feedback? Inevitably, everyone has the positive feedback. It's not that, hey, you took the paper and now you are coming and telling, how are you able to give this kind of a bold statement? No, I work in North Dakota where they are commercialized and my student worked on the geothermal heat pump for carbon dioxide. With that of the information, earlier information and things, I'm affirmatively telling. So uh, that these guys, what, what, what the information, what we try to have, it, uh, it is. So what the people are pronouncing telling that there is a even temperature distribution, no spot heating, like in your concentrators, my focusing is done. Only one area will get heated up and it will melt or make a hole there, right? So that kind of uneven things are not there. It is safe, every wise it is, and it is quiet in maintenance. 
it's more better than having your regular warranty eating applications. That's the only way to, and then frequently warranted, even the company warranty comes for 50 years. Like the, in our basement, in back in your US, in my basement, people give lifetime. Here also we hear about lifetime, but those guys are all will fly away somewhere, but that is different. They're going back, what? Okay, thousand homes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This shows the capacity. Now tell, I'm trying to tell for one home, it can save about 2 to 5 kilowatt per residential application. Per residential application. 2 to 5 kilowatt. Have you seen some systems on your, on, on the, uh, on your, uh, anyway, all were deteriorated, but uh, in general, 1 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt is simple for your solar collectors to light up. But I am asking that per house, through your geothermal heating, a tiny guy coming through the pipes and heating there, it gives to 2 five. What happens to the thousand homes? It becomes mega, a big industry. So what I am trying to tell, when, when I put together, I will be able to save at least 33.3 mm. Again here I was stuck. So one of the coordinator students helped me to find out what is M M M is million. And here the capital M indicates for thousand. So two M M means it is million. So much of million barrels of oil because we are accustomed to tell like tons of oil equivalent, the coal, everything you know, the energy in the industry market level we call it as a tons of oil T O E. The units will be there, the newspapers everywhere, it will be TOE. But instead of that, people have started to use this as MM, telling that uh, 10 power of 6 uh, megawatt, 10 power of 6 barrels of oil of year. So 40,000 being added this year, they are trying to tell each year it is trying to get added as for at least minimum of 40,000. So that is uh, one aspect. Now go continuing with your district heating guys. Now, it also uses the hot water as I mentioned in the pipe, trying to show you how this uh, underground uh, that, uh, uh, payment is kind of created where the pipelines are there, but otherwise there is nothing else pumping inside the house. Most of these guys are groundwater. This uh, Kazakhstan students also shared, they have the floor heating. So most of the springs, what we use, if they are used as a floor heating, not as the uh, wall heating. But if you go into the cold areas, they are all wall heating because oil is, hot oil is circulated or the gas is circulated because they are in the vertical. But when you go for this geothermal, they use the floor heating. That is what you will see in the pictures. Any cold area, geothermal heating will be the floor heating, at least. That little aspect we can we can store it in our mind. Now coming for your electricity generation, guys, we have three type three types we can classify. One is your uh, um, dry steam uh, geothermal. There is nothing but you are trying to drive drive through uh, uh, through the reservoir. The water gets heated up. That just it is sent inside. You are not uh, doing anything about the uh, uh, heat exchanging or anything about it. Just you are sending the water, getting it, get it, uh, getting to steam. It passes through the vessel. It gets uh, 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 turns your turbine, and the power is uh, generated. That is a simple process. If there is nothing else that you do, but whereas okay, uh, it's it's positiveness. Then so the the advantage of this guy is at the lowest technology required and low capital cost but whereas the problems with this one is very few sites are there so in the united states we don't have uh, many maybe one or two are even i am not i have an idea about this one is because the service temperatures are very rare you, for you to get that steam alone to come. So it's not very popular. But the next set, two, two and three are popular, the second type and the third type. The second type is your flash steam uh, geothermal power plant. What it is happening is flashing process. Flashing means what? Getting some when the pressure difference is there, it will automatically draw. And when the temperature is there, like you are having a hot painting, and you have another vessel with a low pressure. This is a high pressure. Automatically, when it is drawing out, it will not flow alone. It will draw the liquid along with it. Not only the steam will flow, along with it, a suction is created for that. So it flashes. That is one way to understand. Another way of understanding of the flashing, when we tell flashing process, tries to pull 
things together, both uh, phase change kind of a substance. But same thing is uh, when you try and use the other same in English, we have only one word here again to use. So the language here flashing means then the phase change. Liquid comes, it flashes as a steam, that also we call it as a flashing process. So here what is happening is the hot steam, that the, the hot water that is coming inside at a very high pressure tries to flash through, then that goes through a, 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 goes into your turbine as a high pressurized steam and does the job. That's it. We need a high pressurized steam. So that works out. So that is called as your uh, regular flash steam process. The third one is Okay, uh, we are trying to show an example of this a flash steam process. So generally what the working fluid they use is your water and then 240 degrees and the pressure is maintained is 24 megapascals. So we are getting the, for this conditions itself, they were able to achieve the flashing process that is taking place, how the uh, turbines work. The third one and the last type uh, of the type is your binary cycle, geothermal uh, geothermal water pump. You will get a more idea. I'm talking in a very dry way, but I will show the last video uh, summarizing all my things, especially these three things in a workable form. You know, you can have, uh, you can have a look at it. So here on the moderate hot water, minimum temperature, like the temperature is around 175 thing, it passes through an heat exchanger, through you use a low refrigerant beyond water, anything else uh, less than like ammonia or anything can be utilized. So utilize that. So naturally the enthalpy is much, the enthalpy of uh, uh, vaporization, that part amount of heat capture is much higher. That will be utilized and that guy will go through the thing. But one thing in this process, what is happening is I am drawing the water the, from the geothermal area directly. They are all, they can be brine solution. They can have some metals uh, uh, deposited in it. But in this one, I make sure that my turbine is not affected by it at all. It is because you are heat exchanging the solution. So the difference in the binary is your binary two type is, is to have your work, working fluid different from the fluid that enters into your turbine. So that, that, that is the one thing you, you can take back into your mind. I don't know. Each time it is coming. Did I cover this? Yeah, okay. So this one, it tries to tell you about, okay, using all this electrical power plants for this particular system, also for this binary. It needs a high efficiency equipment and then water never contacts the turbine so that I don't have any corrosion issues or blade issues and all. And then water returns directly to the reservoir so I'm not storing. So it is safely returned back to the soil itself. The brine water can be returned back. So no plant emissions, nothing like that. So we can always find positives if we want to sell us something. So same thing is that guy. Now coming back into your uh, telling about the geothermal generation, the main positive aspect about the geothermal generation is the advantage is no, little or to no pollution. No pollution, I can understand. What is little? Where it can come, pollution. It's all underneath the ground. Excavation, again, in order to do that. And second thing is, things can, magma means what? Sometimes things can erupt with the ash and everything can come out, right? So, or the, even the isotopes can be thrown out. So little, little things, I mean, more you need an excavation to be done, right? Even for you to lay them to bed and everything. So all that little, that's why they said it's little too. Okay, now coming back, expected to be dominant. Future systems will be binary because so that we can avoid your turbine days, which is the most expensive one, can be safeguarded and for different other reasons also. So the most important here, the Lake County. In California, that guy is considered to be the geysers of the geothermal paths. That is a, because so many geysers, minimum of 33 geysers are there. Minimum of 33 geysers are uh, geothermal power plants. Geothermal, see, geothermal to your electric power plants, 33 in that, in, the, in, in that area. So this is what it tries to show in terms of your emission guys, like a sulfur oxide and then carbon dioxide. All compared to the other guys, they are minimal. <coughs> that is what they are trying to argue about it for your geothermal. Everything is minimal. That's why little to no. 
and then coming back into the thing, uh, uh, what are the uh, further the, what are the benefits? So compared to your fossil fuels, we can get say 22 uh, million uh, tons of carbon dioxide because these are all being emitted by my coal power plants. All this by use going through the path of uh, geothermal, I can avoid. So these are the points. Uh, they have brought in like I mean, uh, 11, uh, 110 uh, kilotons of dump and then 80 kilotons of uh, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide. All these things, we are avoiding it in that way. It is fine. But apart from that, people are telling that we can get some useful minerals to be extracted. Because uh, wherever this magma or the volcanoes are all there, you know, some uh, special materials also get deposited there, especially meta metallic uh, kind of uh, powders gets uh, deposited, you can extract it, that's what they are telling them. Soil for a profit. The soil. Have you heard about in Kolar or somewhere, people go and find for gold in sand, some traces of gold? Someone goes as the as an hobby and people do that. Yeah. You have gone there? No, I think it's a good problem. Okay. So I'm just trying to tell like what all comes out and then you utilize each time I press, I don't know what I'm pressing also. Okay, reliability. Plans are reliable. More the 60 to 70 percent of coal, um, you are only getting like a 60 to 70 percent as a reliability factor, but whether, whereas this guy gets a 90 percent uh, uh, reliability factor compared to that guy's. And then benefits of uh, further ca carrying out is another aspect of this thing is old painful. How do you increase your reliability of it? People are shown from 1800s, there are systems which have been installed as your uh, geothermal electrical driven stuff are still working. Like for example, this one is 1913, New Zealand one is still working. Then one, no, this one is Italy and the New Zealand one since 1958 still functioning. Who are born in these years? Anyone born in this years? I am close to this guy in California. Okay. Just to break the journey, what else to do? Okay. Minimal land use, another advantage, minimal land use. That is true. Then, then you don't need a space at all. A small vessel. I, we have visited the houses which is having in all in my student to, in order to take the experimental data. So we can very small, just like your pump, water pump that is coming out. There is no need an extra space at all. And then for in order to establish like you all, if you if you want to construct uh, or uh, for your uh, electricity production. Minimum is in kilowatts or something like that, megawatts or something. So if you want to go for one gigawatt, can you imagine the area? 400, and 400 square feet. That's all is required. What is 400 square feet in this room? Last time itself I asked about, when I said about Hong Kong 367 square feet house I have. That's it. One corner of it. This is, oh, this is not square feet, this is meter square. Yeah. Meter square is still. Yeah. That I was thinking again and again square feet. So 400 meters square for a gigawatt power plant, but when you compare with the coal, there is nothing. Coal needs the trucks to bring in storage, everything else. So in that way also, this guy is an attractive one, guys. Let's go for it. We all will go and settle down in Iceland. Now, going back and seeing that startup cost again, they are coming back. That is the biggest issue of your of your this guy. The initial investment is definitely high, but once you have done that, we can. Uh, I am not sure what is the payback period, but the payback period should be good because the heat pump aspects at least uh, I see commercially there. People will not go there if the payback is not there compared to the temperature, what they are try, what the electricity they drive to heat their water, uh, heat their room. They are going for this means it is beneficial. If not, it would not have been into the picture. Anyway, the cost of the power of the consumer is only about 0.05 cents. No, 0.05 dollars. To that, 0.05, not the cents. But you know, we, we are getting about 
8 cents to 11 cents for a biomass. But the others are all higher. So that's why I'm seeing that this is geothermal because of the initial investment of the cost, the, the, the cost is uh, uh, appearing to be that. Okay, other disadvantages is the water can be glistened to the power plants and the equipment can get uh, corroded and uh, uh, how much water is needed for each megawatt required? Minimum is 500 gallons per, mi uh, per minute. 500 gallons per minute. So that, and it also gives you an oil issues. Same thing in biomass, people say anaerobic digesters. They have a egg spell, the H2S gas is coming. So some, some kind of negative things are always will be attached to it. So we need to dig the points. What all can be negative, what all can be positive about it. And then release of steam or hot water can be noisy. If it is really uh, like a waterfall, they create a kind of a sound. If you are so, so much sound sensitive, then you cannot have that one. But I feel too dry to speak something like this. Okay, now comes the story. Underneath, uh, which we really do not know what is happening. It's called as a, it's called as a ring of fire. You have seen a movie, something else, right? So, going back and seeing here, different parts of the country, the most important uh, resource is in the Iceland, followed by the US. This is following, not listed. The ring is spread like that. US, Italy, France, China, Japan. That it goes like that, okay? So these are the countries that has, according to the magnitude, these places have been spelled. So these countries have the uh, geothermal resource. Others, India is not there, we can forget it, okay? Now, coming back and seeing here, the United States is, is the is the topmost country for producing the electricity through the geothermal power. That I've already said. It's all becoming repetitive, right? Okay, this is this is about uh, the countries. Do you see India where? Somewhere in the top, I think it belongs to Pakistan. That's the way I took it. <laughs> I don't know. It is sitting in that place. This top end. Does it belong to China or as I do not know? Tibet? Would I tell something? That's it. Who knows if it's going to happen? I know for sure. How are you guys are going to be answering tomorrow? Jokes. <laughs> Instead of taking one hour exam, you will be sitting in for 10 minutes and run. No way. That will not happen, Mr. Mati. Okay, let's go. And these are telling that how many gigawatt hours you are getting the uh, geothermal energy gas. Okay? Pardon? Dollar, dollar, dollar. Dollar symbol shows. That is the power of the geothermal. It has a 500 million dollars allocated. If you wanted to do research, go do that, come settle in USA. I, have, I, I do not know what I should write about geothermal. But where in which area you want to, uh, what are the areas people are going to give you? Eh? See, like this, it flips back or once in a while. I don't know what I'm now pressing. But now, seeing here, the, uh, uh, now you can see that what is your current and what is the estimated amount. Of, the current is your green and it is estimated to today's technology and expected to enhanced technology. So, today we are having 6,500 megawatt. But with modest advances, it's expected to go back to. 18,900 megawatt. With improvements, they predict it can go from 6 to 3 times it can increase. So that is what they have done. And then is there any growth continued? So people are telling that if you can drive 3 to 5 miles, people had found out, geologists have found out, 3 to 6 miles or 3 to 5 miles down, they see some kind of a place which are hard rock, which has rich, rich resource for your temperature purpose. But the main uh, 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 issues or the challenges, what they have is how to drill this guy, that rock, how to go about drilling that to withstand that many feet down. It's not like drilling. So what? It's so easy. Not that angle. 
it is trying to go that many miles down in order to do that. That is the area where these few countries like US, Japan, England, France, Germany are all exploring how should I tap that amount of the heat. See, again, that, that's the same thing is coming. Okay, now coming back, the technology currently exists to provide almost all the heating and cooling. The current technologies can be for all existing cooling, but whereas for your future development, what they are trying to tell is based on your future development, they expect that it can meet with all your electricity needs in US. Specifically in US, right now heating and cooling demand, it can be met with the existing resources and technologies, but with the future one, they can meet with the entire, we don't need the solar also. That is the angle in which at least United States, States has the resource, so it is trying to mention that it can meet even the space heating uh, stuff as well. So you can see that from 1970 in the United States, it began in the 2000, it was around the three, uh, 2000 something, right, 2700 as a capacity, but the same thing currently, how many? 3,900. Currently, it has the 3,900 megawatt capacity. Compared to 2000, the currently this one is also 2010 or 12, I'm not sure. From that, I put this, uh, put this time. Okay, then, and then you see that about 40, 400,000 heat pumps. 400,000 heat pumps. Then you can see that the mushroom like every house being having and then 40 greenhouses, 30 fish farms. They are trying to show you that really which kind of industries they are utilizing for this kind of a heating. But all this district heating are meaning about your, uh, uh, we saw heat farm for residential sector, district heating will go for all kind of this industry application. And, uh, they are trying to tell that uh, the current state of the geothermal technology tends itself to the two-phased approach targeting the short and the long-term goals. So the short-term goals means between the, within the, the, a decade, whatever the changes you want to see, they are the short-term goals. The others are all long-term goals. So they are trying to see that in a long-term goal, they wanted to find out the district heating system at least 270. 71 collocated cities means all the neighboring cities around that geysers wherever it is available to be connected with your geothermal power. So that is the space heating applications. Did I come back again here? Yeah. What are they doing? I should do the right click or left click? Right click? Anyway, okay. Can geothermal energy run out? Please answer. This will be one question for you all. Will it run out? No. See, why are you thinking so much, man? How oh, can it is in the inner, inner part of the earth, right? What about if fact is back to there? It's not going to run to the earth first. Are we researching the one? Pardon? When you want, when after using for your electricity, then generation and all, after using it gets reset. Okay, last one video with with my dry lecture. I wanted that to be shown. You may have relaxed in a natural hot springs pool or seen the old faithful geyser blasting hot water into the air in Yellowstone National Park. But have you ever thought of where all that heat comes from? Well, it comes from deep beneath the surface of the Earth, and it's called geothermal energy. And we can use it to generate clean, renewable electricity. Okay, here's how geothermal works. Heat from the Earth's crust warms water that is seeped into underground reservoirs. In some places, when water becomes hot enough, it can break through the Earth's surface as steam or hot water. This usually happens where the Earth's crust or plates meet and shift. In the past, taking advantage of geothermal energy was limited to areas where hot water flowed near the surface. But as geothermal technologies advance, we can leverage even more of these natural, renewable energy sources.
engineers have developed a few different ways to produce power from geothermal wells drilled into the ground. Have a look at this. It's a dry steam geothermal power plant, and it's the most common type of geothermal technology used today. Underground steam flows directly to a turbine to drive a generator that produces electricity. Pretty straightforward. Another geothermal technology is called a flash steam power plant. A pump pushes hot fluid into a tank at the surface, where it cools. As it cools, the fluid flashes, or quickly turns into vapor. The vapor then drives a turbine and powers a generator. A binary cycle plant works differently. It uses two types of fluid. Hot fluid from underground heats a second fluid, called a heat transfer fluid, in a giant heat exchanger. The second fluid has a much lower boiling point than the first fluid, and so it flashes into vapor at a lower temperature. When the second fluid flashes, it spins a turbine that drives a generator. The environmental benefits of this clean, round-the-clock, renewable energy source are substantial. Low emissions, small physical footprint, and minimal environmental impact. The few byproducts that can come up are often re-injected underground. Geothermal energy can also help recycle wastewater. In California, wastewater from the city of Santa Rosa is injected into the ground to generate more geothermal energy. Some plants do produce solid waste, but that solid waste may contain minerals that we can remove and sell, which lowers the cost of this energy source. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that untapped geothermal resources in the United States, if developed, could supply the equivalent of 10% of today's energy needs and cut our dependence on fossil fuels. In fact, Electricity generated by geothermal energy already provides about 60% of the power along the northern California coast. From the Golden Gate Bridge to the Oregon State Line, geothermal energy, helping to push America toward energy independence and a clean, renewable way to meet our growing energy demands. <laughs>